Yes, sir. Okay. So let's be on the dashboard here. Here we need to understand the concept of user authentication and authorization. There are two different things. User authentication, if I'm talking about, what does it mean? It's all about who are you or what is your identity? Right, like when we reach the office, if you have the ID card, you are directly allowed in. If you don't have the ID card, the security asks you to stop and make some entries. Most likely that will be the case with visitors. Am I right? Yes. Next is user authorization. What is it? This comes only after authentication. Once the identity is known, we've checked for what permissions you have. Okay. Like you have the ID card, that's okay. You are allowed to be in to the office premises, that's OK. But with that ID card, can you have the access to all the sections of the office? All the parts like store, like server room. There must be some restricted access areas also in the office, right? And probably that's where just having ID is not enough. Your ID needs to be enabled for having the access to those areas as well. And probably the people working in that team. Get that explicit permission. So once someone joins the team, their ID is enabled to have the access. Otherwise, you don't get the access. It is as simple as that. That is authorization. At the application level also, it is the same thing. When you do the login, you just prove your identity. And once you are into the system by logging in, then you are checked whether this module is allowed to be accessible by you or not. That is where the authorization comes. Now the question is how this authentication authorization can be provided. It can be provided. with a user store built in a database and integrated with your application. Right? That is one of the way. The second way is. There is already some authentication authorization provider. So maybe here I simply say using some provider. Or better way using auth provider. Auth talks about authentication and authorization both. What is more advantageous? Building your own system with the database, integrated user store and writing the code for it. 
or using an existing provider which is proven and tested. What do you think? Tell me quickly. Guys, I'm asking some question, waiting for the response. I've given you two options. One where you build your own stuff with the authentication authorization integrated into a database or using an existing provider which is already tested and proven. So Which one for, is better? Uh, for most uh, businesses, uh, it will make sense to actually have a third party proven authentication software. Yes. And that provider can be something which is integrated well into the servers also, right? Which most of the applications might be already using that are hosted on that server. Because when you build your own system from scratch, it will take a lot of time to get settled and get proven and again because it is a database it can be prone to more of hackers right this is where if you talk about windows operating system typically the windows server if i say windows server comes with a ldap implementation named as active directory services Active Directory Domain Services. Right? This is an LDAP implementation, which is a standard in the industry. Linux also uses LDAP in its raw format. Active Directory Domain Services are the implementation of LDAP by Microsoft by further simplifying and making it better. Understood? If your application is running on a Windows Server machine and is looking for authentication authorization to be done, if that is integrated with this ADDS, you simply don't need to provide any credentials. Your logged in user credential itself will be used to authenticate whether the user has got the access or not. Don't you think that will be better? If I use my own stuff, integrated with the database, I will require the user to enter user ID and password. And if user does the data entry, it's more hackable or more prone to hack hacking. Yes or no? There are lots of screen emulators or recorders created with the help of which the keystrokes can be tracked and the user IDs passwords can be hacked easily. So if you're not typing, it's already safe. If you're typing, then it is vulnerable. Agreed? Yes, sir. Like we work with SQL Server initially, right? When I go to SQL Server Management Studio. Here it asks me <coughs> how I want to authenticate. There is Windows authentication, there is SQL authentication. If I go with SQL authentication, I need to put in user ID password. If I go with Windows authentication, 
no user ID password is required. What looks more secure? Windows authentication. This is where the Active Directory services are coming in, but that's for on on premises systems. How about using the similar feature for the cloud applications? <coughs> Don't you think this authentication authorization system of Active Directory should also be on cloud for that? Because it should be available with cloud scale implementation. Yes, and that's where Microsoft comes up with. Azure Active Directory services. Popularly called as AAD. Understood? Yes. This also can be deployed as a resource. This is available for free for 250 users. After that, you have to upgrade, and there are plans for that. Just like for many subscription based things, we have plans. So let's see how do we create an Active Directory instance, which is usually called as Active Directory tenant. So here we say create resource. Go to identity. See if Active Directory services are there. Azure Active Directory is there. No. So let's look for Active Directory using the search box. Type Azure Active Directory. We'll get this option Azure Active Directory. Select this. Click create. What it is asking for is what type of tenant you want to create. There are two options. Azure Active Directory and Azure Active Directory B2C. You know what is B2C in general? Business to consumer. Yeah. Business to consumer, that's right. Means individual users can also be supported along with the business users. The first one represents B2B, business to business. Means I can support the users from only my organization that is called a single tenant. I can also support the users from my organization as well as partner organizations that is called as multi tenant support. So user from any active directory if I'm accepting that is multi tenant. If user only from my active directory I'm supporting that is single tenant. And if the user from any active directory plus the individual users like Hotmail, Outlook users are also supported. Then we say this Active Directory is a tenant with B2C behavior enabled. Got it? So which one to select will depend on what kind of application you are building, for whom you are building it. Is it clear? But now we'll be using the first option as your active directory. So next. Okay. 
it will ask you for the organization name you can say providence is the name initial domain name it has to be globally unique again which will be created on subdomain on, on microsoft.com that will be your active directory endpoint name i'll call this as oi pro aad fortunately it's available and then the country or region i'll select based on where my most of the audience is located i mean the end users so for now i can just say india it doesn't mean only indian users will be allowed so next Sir, what did you do in the country region? India. Select India and Once you click next, you must be on the screen. Here, just say create. Captcha comes up. You have to provide that. Submit. If valid, the tenant creation. starts it says it is successful here it provides a link to navigate to your new tenant just click on that link it opens another browser tab within which it will load the ad portal done yes sir
everyone on the screen Here you can see on the left hand side we have a section called as manage where we can see users, groups, etc. etc. Let's select users. You will find your current user ID by default added there as an admin, global admin of this directory. Who can do everything into this directory? Though it is a guest user actually. Hotmail.com cannot be the user of this directory, but it is something which has got the global admin permissions. Understand? Yes, sir. Here I want to create a new user. Create user. There are two options. I can invite the guest also, or I can create a fresh user in this directory itself. For now, I want this create user in this directory. I say the name of the user is James. And say here the domain name automatically has been picked up for me. The name of the directory we gave dot on Microsoft dot com. Yes. Here I say name is James Bond, first name James, last name Bond, and then I am okay. That system generates a password for me. It's important for us to say show password and copy it and keep it for future reference somewhere because when the user logs in for the first time, this uh, uh, password will be required. And the user will be forced to change the password immediately. Understood? Because user is the right person to decide what password he wants. If admin wants this user to be a part of some user group, he can add it to the specific group. And with that, he basically can enjoy the authorization permissions. Block sign in is set to yes in case if you want to create the user but not enable it immediately. But now I just go ahead with no. And then the usage location for that specific user where he is going to log in from most of the time. So let's say this user is going to log in from India. Create. The user is created. Anytime I can select this user and delete the user also. OK. Now what next? I want the application to be created, which will authenticate its users from this active directory. Let's go to Visual Studio for the same. Create a new project. This time it will be a web application. I'll wait. Just confirm you all are on the same screen.
Yes, so we are. <coughs> okay. Here you scroll down and select ASP.NET Core Web App Model View Controller and say next. Name for the project, let's say, is AZ underscore demo AAD auth. Location, set it right. Next. Wait. Okay, we'll change the application type for now. Here more manual configuration is actually needed. Let's select ASP.NET Core Web App. ASP.NET Framework. This one. ASP.NET Web Application .NET Framework. And then say next. <coughs> yes. Yes, Next, let's name this as AZ underscore demo AAD auth. Select the location as, as it is .NET framework based now. Select the latest framework available here. Then say create so that you will be landing on this page. Yes, here select MVC and then on the right hand side, do you see this section authentication? The value for which right now seems to be no authentication. Yes. Yes, sir. And just after that, there is a link titled as change. Click on that. This is relatively easy with .NET Core. You have to configure all these things manually. That's why I changed the application type there. Here I go to work or school accounts. No authentication means no authentication. Individual user accounts means database driven user store. Windows authentication will work only on local server. On premises. If I'm looking to integrate with Azure AD, the cloud based Active Directory, I have to select work or school accounts. And then here I have options. Cloud single organization, cloud multiple organization, or I still want to uh, support the fixed users from my own organization. So I can select on premises here as well. Now I'll go for cloud single organization. Now what is the 
active directory name that I should be putting here. In your case also, it may be looking empty in the drop down, right? Right? So your active directory no, name sir. comes from the portal. Sir. Yes. Like for in my case, in domain, it's showing my Outlook account. That is also not something which we want. OK, sir. Right, so go to the portal, go to the directory. Here you have the complete domain name. Copy this OIProf double AD for me dot on Microsoft dot com. And this is what you will be required to put. It's only the domain name, not the username, right? Hence, say OK. Sir, do we have to click on uh, redirected data? No. Here you have to say login with the user which has got the admin privileges for your AD. So you have to say use another account. And log in with your Outlook account, which we created for accessing the subscription. So for me, it is socket clinic at hotmail.com. Next. Excuse me, sir. Uh, while creation of the project, could you just uh, reiterate the options that you selected? When you say new project, there are three drop downs. There you select C sharp, Windows and web. Once you select web, there are multiple options in the middle section where you have to find out ASP.NET web application .NET framework. OK, so I got it. Thank you. Right, so here I selected ASP.NET web application .NET framework. Give the name, location, framework, create. Here you select MVC, click change. Work or school accounts, cloud single organization, and here you have to paste the new Active Directory domain name, which I have obtained from the Active Directory portal. Overview tab directly has got primary domain name listed. Just copy and paste it here. Yes. Sir, I'm getting an error while adding the primary domain. What error you are getting? Uh, invalid domain name. <coughs> Can you share your screen? Yeah, one minute. Is my screen is ready? Yes. Yeah, here it is. Can you go to the Active Directory portal? Copy this domain name. Go to Visual Studio. Remove that domain and paste the new. Click OK. You have the domain already created, right? Yes. Sir. OK, can you go back to the portal? Refresh this page. OK, go back to Visual Studio. Uh, click before V 
in domain name and see if there is any leading space before v if he has delete and trailing space after com now there are no spaces <clears throat> click okay probably there was some special character avinash yeah okay sir i guess it is working now yes thank you so when we do copy paste we have to be very careful any special character also makes difference right click okay over here it asks you for the login you have to log in with the same user id which you have used to create the subscription so for me it is sarkit karnik at hotmail.com next my login is configured with multi factor authentication so here it says use the same so i click on send notification i should get it on my phone from where i should approve it so here i tap the number 54 and approve it's approved and you can see it's connected to my active directory tenant yes click create the application is created just make sure here you click on this arrow drop down arrow and say browse with which browser you are using for uh, the subscription is it edge or chrome chrome edge in my case so you have to use some alternate browser over here or maybe simply go for internet explorer here i believe this option must be there with everyone right i would recommend to go with some other browser if you have there will be no challenge i'll be going with firefox or maybe let me try with internet explorer first and then click on browse yeah it has started here my application is asking me to log in first i'll say use another account there are lots of compatibility issues with internet explorer that's why i try avoiding it as microsoft also has stopped supporting this browser now okay eventually i get this aket karne ke hotmail.com directly will log in because it is already the administrator i want james at my directory name the full name to be able to log in so i say next what is the password i copied it here i put that password and say sign in it says please update your password i paste that copied password
give the new password and confirm password and say sign. This is one time activity. Now it says there are some permissions request. This application is going to talk to the Active Directory tenant and would like to sign you in and read your profile. If you give consent, then only the login will be completed. If you don't give consent, there will be no login here. So I say accept. And I should be logged in. Here you can see hello, welcome message is there. I'm able to browse the application. I click on sign out. And it goes back to the login screen only. Yes. So practically we didn't put any code for enabling the authentication at all in our project, but it is still working. We just integrated active directory even if we are doing it manually we just need to provide the configuration we don't need to put code for authentication the code for authentication is already there in active directory you don't need to do anything do you get it do you get it It's all working. Now how it is working, how the request is going to this AD tenant only. Let's investigate that. This is my application structure. If I go and open web.config file, few clues you will find here. See this. There is some configuration which says client ID is this. That means my application's ID. AAD instance where the login will be performed is this. Domain is this where the request will be fulfilled. The tenant ID is this where the domain name doesn't work. The tenant ID works and after logout where to go. That is also listed here, but this is just you know key value pairs. They won't do anything on their own. So further configuration you will find an app start folder startup.auth. This file has got configure auth method, which is basically having the code to set up the authentication based on the details we have provided in the config file, which are being retrieved here. Yes. Understood. Yes, sir, I actually missed the sign in process that you made a uh, little while ago. This is just the previous step. OK. <clears throat> Did you try running the application and uh, login? Yeah, I, I ran it. It is prompting mm -hmm. for a sign in. Uh, just put the new user that you created along with its password. It should ask you to go for changing the password. Once you change the password, re-log in, and after that, you just need to browse through various links presented by the application, and then at the end, log out. <coughs> okay. Here I have another file called the startup, which actually calls the code which is written in startup auth. And if I look at this account controller, this is an MVC controller which actually is taking care of sign in, sign out request. Yes. And then. If you look at home controller, there is simply one attribute called as authorize, which is 
forcing the user to actually log in first before accessing anything. Do you get it? Yes. All the setup is there. Manually, if you do this much of setup, you have to do yourself. And. This is not the only thing your application knows about the AD. The AD before saying yes, this is valid user or no, this is not a valid user. Also should validate whether the request is coming from a known application or not. So for that, I go to the browser the AD portal. Here you have an option called as app registrations. If you go inside this. And switch to all applications, you will find. An entry with your application here. Where there is an application ID listed, which you can compare with the client ID that we saw here. 2530FD5D. 2530FD5D. It is the same. So here, Active Directory knows that there is an application which has been approved by me, and any request coming from this application, I have to serve back. Understood? Understood? Yes, sir. Okay, now let's say I want to enable the multi factor authentication here. So I go back to my directory main overview page. In fact, the users page. Here we have per user MFA option. Click this. You go to the main page and there you have users, right? Where you created the user. There you have per user MFA. It opens another portal for MFA where the list of users is displayed. For whichever user you want to enable the MFA, select that user or that many users and click on enable here. Enable multi factor all. Close. That's it. What is required from the admin side? Now, when I go to this application and run it, I shouldn't run it in Chrome. So I close it. And I would like to run this with IE. So again, I say browse with Internet Explorer. Browse. Sir, did you make any changes in the code in the web no. config or in? Okay. No, nothing. Select this user. New password I have to put. Sign in. It says Microsoft has enabled security defaults to keep your account safe. OK, so I say next. Here it should ask me to configure how the multi factor authentication is going to be used for me. Recommended option it says is Microsoft Authenticator app. But if you don't have one. In that case, you can say. I want to set up a different method. In the drop down, select phone. Confirm. Then it asks you to enter the country code. So I'll go for. India. Add the phone number. 
and text me a code option is selected. I'll just say next. So this is like I'll be receiving an OTP to verify this number belongs to me. Which I have to put over here. And Dada. next. Dada. Dada. Baba. Baba. It says SMS verified. Your phone was registered successfully. I say next and done. I don't want to be signed in forever, so I just say no. And I'm locked in. To test whether this has been configured properly or not, I just say sign out. And sign in again. With the same user. Baba. Provide the password. And now it should by default text me with the new code every time when I log in. Here I receive it. And I'm so multi factor authentication also in it without too many efforts, right? Yes, okay, now. If I want to just get rid of this Active Directory tenant, I've already practiced it. I no more want this. What I'm supposed to do? First, I go to multi-factor authentication portal. I kept it open purposefully. Select the user and just like I said, enable, I say disable. Close this tab. Here I delete this user. Select and delete user. User is deleted. My directory needs to be in the same state how it was when it was just created. Otherwise, I cannot delete it. Then I say go back to the main directory portal. And from here, go to app registrations. I need to get rid of this app registration also. Delete. OK, so this is cleaned up. Sir. Yes. Sir, what happened? One by one, please. Yeah, uh, so in uh, demo app, uh, after delete, uh, deleting, it will come delete app registration, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, who was next? Uh, sir, uh, after deleting the user, what have you done? Just come back to the main portal of the Active Directory by clicking on the directory name, the organization name basically. Like this. You come back mostly to this overview tab, right? There you have app registrations. Go inside app registrations, all applications. Here you will find your app registered. Yes. Yes. 
Select that app, click on that, and there you will have delete app registration option in the toolbar. Like this is there. If I click this, I should have delete app registration on the toolbar. Yes. It may ask the confirmation, just say OK, yes, whatever it is. And then your list should be empty like me. Yes. Sir. Yes. Uh, sir, actually I got lost again. OK, what was the last thing you hear from me? Uh, Can you share your screen? Yes, sir. Is my screen sharing, sir? Yes, it is. Just a moment. Yeah, so you are on the overview tab. Click on app registrations on left side. All applications. This is your application registered, right? Yes, Click sir. This. You have to delete this because whatever you have done after creating the directory, if anything of that is pending, your directory tenant will not be allowed to be deleted. So click on delete. Check that box. I understand and click delete. OK. Just click on refresh button in the toolbar. Yes, sir. It's empty. OK, just uncheck. Yes, sir. Now here, I hope everyone is done with deleting the user created and the application registration. Right? I go back to overview. And here, Oh, they seem to have removed the delete option from here. Maybe place somewhere else. OK, let let me try with manage tenants. It must be here, yeah. So on overview tab, click on manage tenants. You should get the list like this of whichever active directories that are active. One must be your uh, Azure Pass sponsorship and the other one must be the one that you created just now. Yes or no? Yes. Select the one that we are looking to delete. In my case, it is Providence. There is a delete option. OK. Select it this way. Select the checkbox and see the delete button is here. Make sure you have selected the correct Active Directory for delete operation. It will take you to a page similar to this. Green text means the condition satisfied. All the users created are deleted. All the app registrations are deleted. If any red or orange mark is there, that means something is pending and that's why delete button is not getting activated. What is pending? Let's see Microsoft Azure subscription. Get permission to delete Azure resources. Let's click on this link. And here click on yes. Save. Then click on this delete tenant option. And refresh this. All green tick marks, hence the delete button is active. Click on delete. 
at this moment your active directory tenant is scheduled for deletion actual delete operation will be done somewhere some, sometime by microsoft in the backend you need not be into that close and close this tab and here we are back to our original tab where we can go to dashboard or the home screen so we cleaned up everything what we created for it that's not something which you would be doing every time if you are just doing that active directory tenant creation for learning or research purpose you will be deleting if you are doing it for development if you are doing it for testing if you are doing it for production environment once the directory is created you will never be deleting it understood okay, so what have you made changes in property are you getting that orange triangle somewhere in some properties and there was a link so when we click on that link it opens another page there at the end there are two buttons yes and no click yes and click save share your screen so that i can guide now we have some session successfully deleted and then deleted right okay perfect so i hope it's deleted for all and yes i hope everyone understood why we deleted it unnecessarily some resources if we keep running they will just keep occupying the cloud infrastructure right if we are not using some resource we should delete not only to save cost but to save the resources also which can be used somewhere else if we have deployed the tenant for some testing environment or probably for development environment or for the end user environment production in that case we should never delete the directory once created is it clear is it clear yes no sir could you please just repeat why are you deleting exactly say are we doing any serious development over here which is going to be made like ushar no they're not so shall we be occupying the resources which could have been more useful for someone who is actually doing the uh, live user work on that uh, directory or that resource which is used by our directory yes it's okay, it's a simple thing right if i'm not using i should get rid of it delete it yeah so that someone else can use it because cloud is all about shared resources isn't it yes though it seems like unlimited but it is practically not unlimited right it's huge but it's not unlimited so the resources if we are not using should be freed up someone else can utilize the same make sense yes it does any questions here no sir okay so we'll end the session for today here itself one more topic was there practically for logic apps we'll be starting with that tomorrow morning as the first topic and then there are few more things like uh, the service bus queues then event based solutions like event grid and event hubs somewhat related to service bus only using redis cache is another thing and api management is another thing so these are the topics we will be going through tomorrow
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good luck. Okay. So that is it for today. Bye bye and see you tomorrow at 9.30. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.